Hello again, welcome to the first day of React Holiday. It is the first day of December. Uh, in San Diego, it's like finally below like 75 degrees, which is amazing. Uh, if you're not in San Diego, it's probably much cooler than that. Uh, it's amazing here in San Diego though. I tell people that San Diego, we live here for the winter. Like it is so gorgeous. Like basically the end of November through February, like I can't imagine living anywhere else for that period of time. Anyway, amazing. If you're thinking about moving to San Diego, you should come to San. You should come to San Diego. Today, we're gonna start about start off with something very simple. We're just gonna talk about function components. Now, I have always loved function components for their terseness, but they have had some limitations. They um, are not as capable as um, class based components. Now, the reason that is, is that they don't have uh, lifecycle events and they don't hold state. Now, this has been traditionally true, true, and this has been kind of the uh, reason that there have been these boundaries around kind of like smart and dumb components or presentational and container components, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What I want to tell you is, is that in the future, uh, moving kind of into React 16.7 and beyond, uh, that becomes less true. And um, I think that you can almost kind of forget everything that you've learned up to this point about that mindset of kind of separating like view and data. Um, now, if you're new to React, um, that, that's great. You don't have to learn it for the first time. Um, but if you're old hat, you might have to unlearn or unwind some of that thinking in order to feel comfortable with um, both hooks and suspense. Um, now, that's uh, th that isn't to say that that you that knowledge is useless. Uh, that is just to say that um, as I myself was trying to learn uh, hooks and suspense those uh, kind of old ideas really made it hard for me to like fully embrace um, the new patterns. So what I want to tell you today is that functions are really amazing. And I think that, that more and more in 2019, uh, if you're on 16.7 or later, you're going to find less and less of a need to use a class component. Um, so yeah, so what I want to do is I just want to uh, make a function component, just real simple and easy. But I wanted to tell you that you should start to kind of like unwind some of the things that you feel like you know about function components today and what the boundaries are. Uh, so first of all, I just want to make a component. Um, now, you've probably seen a lot of people use kind of let or const and define a function component uh, in this really kind of like terse style like this. Like that, right? Um, actually, no, not like that. Uh, props. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you've probably seen it defined like this. Now, a way that that's going to change a lot um, in in with these new uh, hook tools is that you're almost always going to want to have um, have access to the return. Now, this um, when you use this arrow style, it you have takes advantage of an implicit return. So you don't have to kind of wrap it in a block and return something explicitly, uh, which is great. Um, but you're going to be doing more and more uh, it, with this where you're going to have to actually return an element because there's going to be a lot more stuff um, jammed in there. So the way that um, it, it's kind of funny because all old things are new again, but um, effectively the way that it things are going this is going to become a much more common pattern for these. Um, so just using a standard function, which is great. Um, I always kind of liked this function version. It was like kind of less decisions and less finicky and, you know, uh, <laughs> prettier was a lot less opinionated about like whether or not this thing had parens around it. And I found it a lot easier to like refactor into a class when I already had that return and everything. So uh, I think this is actually great. Um, so yeah, so this is what, you know, a regular component might look like. So that's function component. Great. Um, we're going to, throughout the course of this app, make something that allows us to kind of navigate Pokemon. Uh, and, uh, so what I want to do is I want to just kind of have a Pokemon, uh, list 
item. So we'll change this to an ally. And then we can just uh, use this in our app here. So uh, because it's a list item, we'll need to wrap it in a list, an onward list in my case. And we'll just say Pokemon list item. And uh, we'll just use the name Pokemon. Got to close this up properly. Awesome. So now we have a list and we have Pokemon. Now, um, this is great. Uh, this is not particularly necessary uh, right now, but obviously I can apply uh, different things. Like if I wanted to style this, I could you know, put, put Pokemon. Obviously there's no class for that right now, but this gives me some isolation around what a, Poke, a, sh a Pokemon list item looks like in this context. So anyway, that's a, um, that is a function component. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can that can be done with it. As an assignment, I want you to look up and find two additional things that you can um, do with function components right now. And uh, so one of those would be like to have uh, default properties. Uh, you can explore with uh, yeah default props. Um, another thing is kind of exploring with how to change this tag, make it make it be dynamic so that instead of just always being an LI, maybe you could take a, a component or um, some text that would allow you to configure that. Um, all of these things are like really cool things that you can do with function components. Um, so yeah, so uh, take this time and kind of explore, uh, take a chance to read the docs. Um, so we'll go to reactjs.org. Um, let's say function components. Uh, if you want to read about function components, uh, there is a bunch of information right here. So Take today and familiarize yourself with function components because they are the future.